Hello again. So this time, I had a strong intention to expand my channel car content even further. From street car evolution to race car evolution for the first time. This is the full history of team Corvette racing spanning from the past to present across four generation Corvette race cars. From the Corvette C5R to the C8R. I cannot wait and am very excited to guide you through the story of Corvette racing as much as I love motorsports racing. And if that sounds like you, you come to the right place. So. Let's get started about how Corvette Racing became one of the remarkable sports car racing teams in the biggest events and at the most famous racetracks around the world over the last two decades and counting. For almost 70 years, the Chevy Corvette has stood alone as America's sports car, and for the last two decades, Corvette Racing has helped push the development, performance, and popularity of Chevy's top line race cars on racetracks around the world. Corvette Racing is the hallmark of North American Endurance Racing's longest running history effort to this day. Competing in events like the American Le Mans Series, 24 Hours of Le Mans, and throughout the IMSA Sports Car Championship as the years have progressed since its pedigrees were back-to-back -back victories. The modern era of the Corvette competition began in 1999 with the debut of the Corvette Racing Team, a partnership between Chevy and Pratt and Miller Engineering which was founded by Gary Pratt and Jim Miller in 1989, who built the race cars and operates the program for Corvette Racing. It all commenced when developing the Corvette C5R in 1997, the year when the 5th gen vet rode into dealerships. Before that happened, plans were well underway to return Chevy to professional endurance racing. The C5R was part of the plan by GM and their Chevy brand to create a factory team to participate in GT races not only in North America, but also anywhere in the world. For example, the 24 hours of Le Mans. GM chose to show the performance capabilities of the C5R by using a more production-based racing car. Their goals were to take on Dodge and Porsche racers. GM assigned the Pratt and Miller Group to build and develop the Corvette C5Rs as well as to prepare the team for a debut in 1999. While the engineering and the businessmen made a perfect partnership, Doug told Gary Pratt, We want to race this Corvette. You tell us where it will be competitive, you test it, you prove to us in private that it can win. And so they did just that. Here you see a photo of the C5R test mural road car from 1997 that's heavily modified to test out the engine and other equipment that the racing cars were to use. This eventually led to development of the C5R race car after testing 4,000 miles. Then the Corvette C5R debuted in November 1998 at the SEMA show in Las Vegas, United States. The C5R initially used a 6 liter V8 based on a road car's LS1 made it to a 5 speed sequential stick manual gearbox. Then the engine was replaced with a larger 7 liter V8 several months later during the 1999 season and became standard for the C5R for the rest of its career. January 1999 saw the race debut of the first two C5R chassis at the Rolex 24 Hours of Daytona and competed for the initial year of the American Le Mans series and continued its racing career for the next five years until 2004. As the C5R competed over the years, the C5R received many modifications to improve its capabilities against stronger opponents. They made changes to the Body Works' aerodynamics to increase downforce. The first year in 1999, Corvette entered five races, using two cars for Sebring, Daytona, and Road Atlanta, only one car for Laguna Seca and Las Vegas. They didn't win a single race that year in the American Le Mans series. However, they did claim a 1-2 start at the 12 hours of Sebring. The C5R finished second in class behind the Dodge Viper at Sears Point and then again at Laguna Seca. When entering the 21st century, the Corvette racing team improved on their previous result by finishing second overall in a GTO class behind a dominant 91 Dodge Viper. They entered more races and received two wins. Corvette Racing wasn't able to match the performance of Team or Curve Viper at Sebring nor Le Mans. Corvette Racing rebounded though after a few tweaks and improvements for the C5R and managed to kill the Viper's winning streak at Texas as well as Petit Le Mans in 2000. Grand Turismo revised between those cars anyone? 
and 2001, Corvette Racing showed that the previous year's experience started to pay off, scored the first of his three GTS victories at Le Mans in 2001, claimed 8 wins across 10 races, followed by 10 wins in 2002 and 2004. Corvette secured their second win at Le Mans in 2002 as well. However, 2003 saw the first challenge to Corvette Racing's two years of dominance in their class and was a nightmare for the team when ProDrive entered their Ferrari 550 GTS for the entire American Le Mans Series season and they managed to kill Corvette Racing's Le Mans streak and winning several races. Also the year which Corvette Racing celebrated the 50th anniversary of the Chevrolet Corvette. 2004 marked the final year of the C5R competition and was able to avenge their loss against the Ferrari at Le Mans and secure their third win at Le Mans. Corvette Racing also regained avenge in the American Le Mans series when the pro-drive Ferrari team was non-existent for the entire season. Altogether, the C5R set the standard for racing success with 31 victories in the American Le Mans series, 3 victories at Le Mans, and 1 victory at Rolex Daytona. That's very dominant in Corvette racing with the C5R was worthy and very successful winning many races and championships. The C5R also sounds incredibly good from the exhaust. Take a listen to it for a sec and adjust your headphone volume. In 2005, Chevy introduced a C6 VET which led to alongside an all new race car, the Corvette C6R GT1 which replaced the dominant C5R, applying the body style of the new C6 VET as well as improvements to increase the speed and reliability on the track. The C6R was more of an evolution of the design rather than an all new car. The race design elements and features are adapted to the C6 Z06 streetcar with which the C6R shares its exterior styling based on the Z06. Underneath the skin, the C6R retained much of the mechanical elements from the C5R using the same 7 liter V8 making 590 brake horsepower, but more closely based on the LS7 from the C6Z06. Like the C5R, the C6R rear visibility was very limited behind the cockpit due to structural framework and fuel tanks eating up the space. So Chevy added a small camera into the rear bumper and a monitor on the roof of the cockpit enabling drivers for a better view behind them instead of relying on their side mirrors during the race. The C6R made its first racing debut at Sebring in March 2005 and competed in the full American Le Mans series season in the first year. The season didn't begin as Corvette Racing had planned, however, as they were beaten by Pro Drive Aston Martin DBR9 but achieved a 1-2 victory at 24 hours of Le Mans where it outlasted the Aston Martin and GT1 class and won the American Le Mans series during its first season. Since then, the C6R proved to be a worthy success to the C5R. It won 39 GT1 races in the American Le Mans series and achieved driver, team and manufacturer championships every year from 2005 to 2008. In that era, Corvette Racing won 12 straight races from 2005 to 2006, followed by 25 consecutive wins from the 2007 to 2009 season. The twin velocity yellow computerware Corvettes also won the GT1 class races at Le Mans in 2005, 2006, and 2009, beating Ferrari, Lamborghini, Celine, Porsche, and Aston Martin. The C6R was even more dominant over its predecessor in the American Le Mans series and at Le Mans for several years and on top of that, I grew up loving and watching the Corvette C6R race in the American Le Mans series and 24 hours on Le Mans on TV. Corvette Racing's C6R sold to be the most successful Corvette race car with the most wins ever than the C5R, C7R and C8R. Like can you imagine?
Corvette Racing and Pratt & Miller took another step forward in mid-2009 after that 24 hours of Le Mans with the introduction of a GT2 and GTE spec version. This will place the GT1 version in its based on a street Corvette C6 ZR1 model. The GT2 design varies from the GT1 and that is homologated on the ZR1 road car while it's the original C6R used the Z06 as its purpose. The GT2 rules along with GTE at Le Mans require many production based components. The result was the C6R ZR1 with production type fenders with simple fender flares to accommodate wider tires. Production type headlights, carbon fiber front splitter, different rear wing, and the diffuser was revamped and relocated. Unlike the C6R GT1 which has steel chassis, the GT2 has an aluminum chassis and a wider body. The C6R ZR1 was powered by a 6 liter small block V8 based on a 7 liter V8 that powered the GT1 version making 470 brake horsepower. Then starting in 2010, the C6R ZR1 was powered by a 5.5 liter production based V8 to continue racing in 2010 through 2013 American Le Mans series and at the 24 hours of Le Mans. Corvette Racing put up a fight against the large rosters of GT2 class cars like Ferrari, Porsche, Ford and BMW in the race events. Corvette Racing and Pratt and Miller had yet again built a phenomenal GT race car and beat what the rest of the world had to offer. The C6R GT2 won a dozen times from 2009 to 2013, plus a victory at Le Mans in 2011, leading Corvette Racing and Chevy to team and manufacturers championship in 2012 and 2013. Tommy Milner and Olivier Gavin won four times in 2012 to claim the GT Driver Championship. Antonio Garcia and Jen Magnussen followed with their title in 2013 with three wins. The Corvette C6R had an eight year racing career from 2005 to 2013. In addition, the C6R's engine sounds incredible, very mean and loud as the C5R. Be sure to take a listen. After the American Le Mans series seized in 2013, starting in 2014 transformed into EMSA Tudor United Sports Car Championship and later was renamed to EMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship in 2016 as we know it today. Corvette Racing entered the Corvette C7R in a series GTLM class based on a road going C7 Z06. Like the C6R, the C7R shared mixed components with a road car of aluminum chassis, direct fuel injection, aggressive strategies for increased cooling, and aero downforce, including similar splitters, rocker panels, and front and rear brake cooling ducts. The C7R seems to be wider in appearance than the C6R and compared to all other Corvette race cars, the C7R has the largest and widest flared fenders of them all and is the most aggressive looking Corvette racer that this doesn't look close to the production Z06 model. The race car engine is nearly similar to the GT2 of the C6R, powered by a 5.5 liter LS55R V8 pushing 490 brake horsepower at 6000 RPMs and 485 pound-feet of torque to the rear wheels combined with a 6-speed semi-auto gearbox. 
The C7R officially unveiled at the Detroit Auto Show in January 2014 after doing a lot of testing and camouflage in 2013 and then made his first racing debut entering the gateway at Rolex 24 of Daytona and then Le Mans that year. The C7R accomplished his first class win at Long Beach following three more races at Laguna Seca, Watkins Glen, and Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. After that point, the C7R has been only collecting podiums and no victories during its debut season. However, the following year in 2015 saw the C7R was even more outstanding by taking the triple gold trophy of endurance racing. One victory at the Rolex 24 of Daytona, 12 hours of Sebring, and the 24 hours of Le Mans. Throughout IMSA sports car season, Corvette Racing endeavors a total of six class podiums, including two wins. Even though early in the season Corvette Racing was a success, they finished third in the GTLM standings. The 2016 season came with new FIA ACO rules merged into the GTLM class similar to the GT3 specs. Corvette Racing feature a much bigger aeros package with a larger front splitter, side skirts, rear diffuser, and repositioned back wing mounted further back and stretched out, which made the C7R look even and stood more badass than priorly. Corvette Racing collected both the GTLM driver's title and manufacturer title, a combined total of 12 class podiums, including 5 class wins and 1 to 2 finishes. Corvette Racing achieved a 1-2 victory at Rolex 24 of Daytona again. Corvette Racing claimed a victory at Lime Rock Park and a milestone 100th win. The C7R enjoyed another successful year in 2017 and won four EMSA races. In 2018, its rivals like the 4 GT, Porsche RSR, and BMW M8 GTE crushed the Corvette streak most of the season. However, the C7R scored enough points for the team to finish the season with first place points, followed by Ford in second place. 2018 was a tight season for Corvette Racing. 2019 marked the final year of the EMSA competition of the C7R and was retired at the end of the season after his final EMSA race at Road Atlanta in October 2019. As Corvette Racing was getting ready for their next car to compete with, the mid-engine C8R for 2020. The C7R did 5 years competing in 65 races total and won 16 of them. Despite having fewer wins than both the predecessor the C6R and C5R, the C7R never finished lower than 3rd in the season's standings. Before we dive into the C8R next, take a listen to the mighty engine noise from this final front-engined Corvette racer. Please enjoy. And finally, here we are at current. The Corvette C8R officially debuted in October 2019 to the public showing enthusiasts what the C8R looks like in the mid-engine configuration which changed the overall shape of the car as the road car C8 Stingray for the first time. This feeds a new generation, a new era, and with a major transformation that Corvette Racing and Pratt and & Miller had never done before turning the C8R mid-engine and completely designing a new racing engine. Personally, and according to most viewers opinions, I agree that the C8R from first glance is the baddest looking Corvette race car yet, looks very sexy at every angle and is prepared for track competition. 
the Corvette C8R, however, did receive a bit of criticism from Corvette fans and enthusiasts. And yes, you guessed it. The sound note of the engine is a huge departure and lacks an angry, deep, roaring V8 sound like the prior Corvette race cars did in the past. The C5, the C6, and C7R. Take a listen to the sound comparison for a sec. At first, I was very skeptical and didn't feel the same about the sound of the new CAR, but sooner I grew into it and dealt with it. The V8 screams much more European relatively closer to McLaren and Ferrari GT cars, and there is a reason. So what exactly is the engine in this car? It's not the 6.2 liter push ride using the C8 Stingray. The 6.2 liter V8 found in the road Corvette is downsized to 5.5 liter naturally aspirated V8 to meet the race rules. What makes this thing sound very different is that Chevy gave the CAR a flat plane crankshaft and dual overhead camshaft, allowing the engine to rev even higher and sound great and sound different, which allows for greater benefits of airflow plus more horsepower. The 5.5 liter LT6 V8 produces a whopping 500 brake horsepower and 480 pound feet of torque to the back wheels and revs up to 7,400 RPMs with the air restrictors required to reduce the power limit. The CAR almost sounds like an F1 car with a new exhaust system, and we do miss that deep, monstrous sound from the C7R. The CAR indeed shares more similar construction and architecture to the C8 Stingray than any other Corvette race car to date. One feature that stands out the most is the mounted back wing is further back and stretches out like the updated C7R's wing from 2016. Corvette Racing's CAR debuted its first race in the GTLM class at Rolex 24 of Daytona for the 2020 EMSA sports car season. After that point, the CAR continued to compete in the GTLM class against some of the world's biggest manufacturers such as Ferrari, BMW, and Porsche. The Corvette did okay at Daytona finishing 4th place in its class after an oil leak incident in the middle of the race. Due to COVID-19, the EMSA sports car season was put on hiatus, delayed for several months, and later restarted the season in July 2020 with a return to Daytona. The CAR had a second attempt to chase victory and took its first win with the number 3 car, followed by 5 more race wins at Sebring, World America, VIR, which is Virginia International Raceway, Mid-Ohio, and Charlotte Motor Speedway. Overall, Corvette Racing finished the debut season of the CAR, claimed 9 out of 11 races in the top podiums. However, Corvette Racing withdrew to take part at 24 Hours of Le Mans for 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The following year in 2021, Corvette Racing finally sent the CAR at 24 hours of Le Mans and finished second in the LMGTE class podium against other competitors. For the fourth time in history since 2001, Corvette Racing stood on a top podium in first place at the Rolex 24 of Daytona for 2021 after five years since Corvette's racing last Daytona win in 2016. As 2022 came around where EMSA eliminated the GTLM class forever and created a new category called GTD Pro that's based on GT3 car regulations. The CAR GTLM car had to retire from EMSA due to not meeting the new rules, but will remain present in FIA WEC including Le Mans. Corvette Racing didn't have an eligible GT3 version of the CAR at the time yet. So the Corvette racing team had transitioned the GTLM CAR to using a GTD kit by detuning and tweaking the car under GT3 rules. Therefore, the car is less powerful than it was before and changes of the parts were made to it. 
Corvette Racing planned to do two EMSA seasons from 2022 to 2023 of GTD Pro, while the Corvette Z06 GT3R not debuting until 2024, and then probably will be in action in EMSA and the GT World Challenge for sure. Chevy and Corvette Racing looks forward to continuing in future years at Le Mans, WEC, and EMSA sports car season. And so happily ever after, that is the full history documentary of Team Corvette Racing. So this is where I'm going to wrap it up here at the end of this video of Team Corvette Racing Evolution. And I hope you guys really did sit back, relax, and learn something new about these Corvette race cars. If you did enjoy this epic video, don't forget to click subscribe and also hit the like button. If you want me to keep doing videos like this, let me know. And as always, you are more than happy to give me any car suggestions in the comments down below. Out of these four generation Corvette race cars, what is your favorite Corvette race car? Peace out, stay safe, Chris Lee Radar out.